We are live. Give me two seconds. I'm just making sure that everything's running. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone today? I'm doing great. This is a, a little hectic at first, but it's good. And our guest today is Amy. Hi, Amy. I think Amy's only a listener. I don't know if she can speak. I mean, I know she can speak, but I'm, I don't think she's listed as a speaker. Yeah, I invited her to speak. Let me see. Oh, there she is. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today, Amy? I'm doing really good, um, you know, for being at a Monday morning. Great. That's a, that's a good answer. We are definitely excited to be speaking with you today. And how are you, Terry? I see you over there. How's it going? I see we have Brent here as well. Hey, Brent, nice to see you this morning. Okay, everybody, we are live. The mic is Terry. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to Empower Yourself Monday is our episode 20. Um, today, we're speaking to Amy Devweiler. I, Amy, I hope I didn't kill your name, but um, I hope I did. I pronounce your last name correctly? Yes, it's Devweiler. Good. Okay. Yeah, we have some, besides speaking about her new startup, there, she's, she has another project that I'm very excited about. She's going to touch base on it, and then I'm going to promote um, her other project on another space. But, but today, um, we're going to go ahead and give the mic to Terry, and I'm going to mute my mic. Terry, how are you? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. The mic is yours. Okay. Wherever you are, sitting, standing, laying down, close your eyes. Relax your face. Just let your jaw drop. Let your shoulders drop. Relax your neck. Feel the stress. Go down your arms, out through your fingertips. Going down the body, relax your torso, your hips. Allow the stress to go down your legs, out through your toes. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale all the stress out. You're completely relaxed. Another inhale. Hold, exhale through your mouth. One more time, inhale in. And exhale. Eyes are still closed. Whole body's relaxed. Gently breathing in and out through your nose. Allow your thoughts to just go right through through your mind, in and out through your mind like clouds that just blow away, clearing it out, gently breathing, in and out through your nose. Closing thoughts. The healthy person lives in harmony with nature. And how do you do that? You create harmony by making choices that feel right to both the mind and the heart, not just one and the other, both at the same time. Consider one choice you need to make today, no matter how, so, <laughs> no matter how insignificant, 
and make it harmoniously with your mind and your heart. That makes it a harmonious choice. Thank you so much. Namaste. May the divine in me honor the divine in you. Thank you. So good morning. I'm not, my mic is not sounding too great. So Emily, I want to let you take over a little bit. Um, there's it does, it does sound a little gravelly, Tanya. Yeah, it sounds horrific. I, I checked it. I just noticed that it comes and goes. So, um, Amy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? And I'm going to mute my mic because I got to figure out why my mic is not working. Yes. So my name is Amy and I am a front end developer. I work with Vue.js, which is why my handle is Amy's view on this. And I have my hand in a few startups. So um, my big focus is I really just want to help other people. And one of my projects is Glot Squad, which is helping language learners that are elementary to intermediate level become advanced language learners because there's just not as many resources out there for that. And that is a cause. And I, I would really just like to do that for a living. And then I'm also involved in a few art type projects. And I just, I want to empower everybody to be able to, um, navigate this world in a, in a good way. I love that. I mean, that is, I think, an amazing driving mission. And the ability to help anybody in this world nowadays is a beautiful thing. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about Glot Squad and how, how that drives language learning overall? Yes. So, Glot Squad is my brainchild. I admit that I have too many projects going on, so it's not as developed as I would like for it to be. But what I'm doing is creating the guardrails in order for people to use real world material to aid their language learning. Because like after you learn the first, you know, 100 words of the language, it really comes down to like, what are you interested in? And how can others help you uh, reach your journey goals? So it, it's um, like asynchronous and just really um, helping people. That's cool. So is it? It's like a community-driven learning platform. Yes. So the first activity I have is called language journaling. So you can take a real world news article or blog and you can highlight the words that you know and you don't know and the words that you don't know you can look it up but instead of returning words i return images and that is helpful because when you're in the middle of trying to use a language you're uh, like not switching the context between your native tongue and what language you're trying to learn is really helpful and humans are really good at, at looking at pictures and deriving a meaning from that so that is just the first of many activities that i'm planning on doing but it's just really helping people help themselves that is really cool do you speak multiple languages it's like are you do you, are you bilingual or speak many so I used to <laughs> I used to be able to speak more languages better, but I was a Japanese language major in college, and then I switched over. I learned Chinese, so I wound up being an Asian studies major, and I lived in China for three years. So the Asian languages, especially, don't have as many resources. So I'm hoping to be able to fill that gap in the market. That's very cool. My stepkids are actually learning um, Japanese right now, and it's certainly not easy. So um, I'm trying to pick it up here and there, and it's it's tough. As I mean, I think the kids just pick it up easier. Certainly, the younger they are, um, 
but it is difficult. So kudos on creating a new platform. And I look forward to seeing how that develops for sure. Um, and then you said you're working on some art projects. Tell us more about those. Okay, so I have a project called Ban Books Art, and that is a free speech advocacy project where we pick a book and we make art that is inspired by the themes that made it banned in the first place. That way we can increase the discussion around those themes because it's really the, the themes that are getting banned and not so much the books themselves. So the first gallery opening is on June 18th and the theme is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And like I myself, I only know there's some religious, I'll be honest, as far as the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe go, I'm not as familiar as to why it was banned and so forth. So what are the themes that you're developing or that you're speaking about in that gallery? Okay, so it was mythicism, gore, and... Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the themes we're going with with uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe are the realities of war, mythicism, and religious allegories. That way, uh, fantastical allegories, because um, for some reason, even if it's a Christian theme, as soon as you put in any kind of magic, for some reason it gets banned. So I think a lot of people have really fond memories of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I feel like this was just a good place to start. Um, I, I do want to add, because the pitch for this is, is a little complicated, but for the gallery opening, all of the profits from the ticket sales will be going to charities that are related to the themes of the banned books. So the the first charities are Voices.org, which um, they're providing art therapy to Ukrainian children that have survived war. Um, Rescue.org, which helps refugees get settled and feed the children for they feed hungry children around the world. That's amazing. Um, I love that there's a charitable aspect to it as well. And is it, a, is it an online gallery? Is it an actual physical opening? Where can people see the art? So it will be a virtual gallery. Um, I'm actually making my own uh, VR environment. So it's going to be really cool. If you follow Banned Books Art, um, my Twitter handle, I'm actually putting little previews up on there. So it's going to be really fun. And if you buy a ticket, I'm also going to be making um, like an ebook out of the gallery so that you can always um, look back at the art. Awesome. And how like how often, and, and you may have already said this, and I'm sorry if I missed it, is it monthly that should be changing things or every quarterly? Um, how often will there be different uh, topics and different books that you're speaking on or, or creating art? The plan is for it to be monthly. Uh, there are a lot of books that have been banned. Um, I have the artists that have... Um, submitted their artwork I have a poll of what they want to have the next theme be so uh, I will be announcing the next theme on June 1st awesome so if and if somebody wants to submit their art so if we have some artists listening would they um, again follow that twitter and is there a submission link or how would they send their art in as well yes um if you want to buy tickets, go to Banned Books, uh, or sorry, HTTPS, www.bandbooks.art. And if you want to contribute art, it's uh, HTTPS, www.bandbooks.art slash contribute. Awesome. And we can get those links or have you, if you want to pin those, we can put those yep. up as well so people can buy tickets and take part. Um, all right, so I'm going to assume you're quite an avid reader and that's how you got started with this project? 
It was actually, um, you know that the banned books have become really prominent in the news. And one night I had a dream that I actually bought this book domain and started the project. And then I woke up and the domain was available and I was like, I don't always take these signs, but I, I this time we're going to do it. We're going to try and make this a thing that we can protest against censorship and uh, book banning and also do real world impact. And this is a, a thing that I would like to do with my free time. I love that story. I love a good, like, I dreamt it and I woke up and just made it happen kind of situation. And that's incredible. And I also love that you said, this is what you want to do in your free time. Um, I think all of us on this call are the same way. We're like, oh, we have free time. Let's start another project or um, open a business or something like that. So I always love a good entrepreneurial female. Um, and I think that's awesome. I I am an avid reader and I just joined a book club of banned books. So I'm super excited about your project and certainly will be attending your gallery showing. And, and this is a pretty, I'm, I'm psyched. This is very cool. Yes. You should let me know when you're having, if your banned books club has like a, a showing, like a, a watch party. And I would love to attend too. They were just, so I just joined this group and they are looking into doing that. So I definitely will. As soon as I have information, I will share it all around because I'm, yeah, I'm very excited for both the club and to make a connection here as well. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. So how's my mic sound now? That's much better, Tonya. Yeah, uh, it's kind of weird. It just changes on its own. The isolation just doesn't want to change in the beginning so i think it's my phone but um so amy on, on the band book project and, and the way you built it i mean is it um is, is a, a vr right is would it be made into an xr if somebody didn't have um because you're building a vr environment am i correct yes i am being extra special um i checked out alt space vr but i don't have a headset so i couldn't develop with it i tried spatial um dot io but i couldn't figure out how to upload my own environment to it so i'm just going to roll my own because i'm a developer and i can but if you don't have a headset you can just use your mouse controls uh like the arrow keys to get around and if you have a vr headset like tonya does you can walk around and view the art like it's supposed to be viewed um this one's going to be really fun. Uh, I'm having, a, I'm not amazing at 3D modeling, but I think that the the spirit of the thing uh, of of Narnia is is going to, to shine through. Yeah, but have you tried the um, XR dot Mozilla dot org? That's the um, they're the original. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm actually, I don't know how technical I want to get, but I'm using A-Frame, which is a wrapper for um, web VR. So, like, it's um, it's just one of those things that makes it easier to, as a developer, to use to um, just have my own, like, VR environment. I'm so excited. I mean, like... Um... You know, when we first met, we met in, in a cybersecurity space. But then when I got to know you, I know you were like developing a lot of different things. And and then we've been talking about your band books uh, um, art project. And I just thought that was incredible. And um, I'm going to we're going to host a space on my other account to talk some more about it. But do, do you find that um, when talking about this one art, pro this partic particular project, is everyone all excited, especially now with Twitter and we're all into Web3 and Everybody's talking about all kinds of ways. And also, um, with your, uh, your project, it's a great way to give back, too. I know we weren't going to talk yeah. about this, but I want to touch base on that. Uh, so, okay, so th this has involved being in a lot of Web3 and NFT spaces. And every time I go into a space, everybody in, in the speakers is very excited about it. And... Um, I'm not sure about the conversion to actual art submissions, 
But so far, I'm really excited about uh, three people have submitted their art. And I think I have about a dozen more people that I'm going to, that they've casually committed to submitting art. So um, hopefully we'll, it's like a good amount of people that are going to submit art. And then I've had one ticket sale so far um, to the other end. So even if uh, like the first time there's not very many people that buy the tickets, I'm still planning on interviewing the artist and, you know, putting it in blog posts and YouTube and trying to do like TikTok and putting it out because it's about starting the conversation. So after the gallery opening, we'll have a couple of weeks where like we hype it and just put it out there. And then after that, it'll be open to the public. And hopefully when people can look and see an example of what we're doing, it'll be like, it'll be reputation building and um, it'll be easier to get artists on and uh, people to participate. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to jump in. And if you, like I said, I, I, I would love to help you in that too, because, and also, you know, I have a lot, I have the data also, because I sat in so many different artist um, spaces that we can reach out to them too. But, um, and, and how much are your tickets going for to attend? So I've actually uh, tiered it. So if you sp uh, spend less money, if you spend $1, you get access to the gallery. If you spend 125, I will send you a custom bottle of wine. So there are lots of ticket options in between. Um, and I have a, a sponsorship that I'm still working out the deals. So that's why like the five to $15 doesn't make sense right now <laughs> because I don't want to announce it and then have to take it back. <laughs> but, um, it's one of those things where I'm hoping to be able to get, you know, co a collaboration and partnership and just, you know, get everybody on board and having a good time. Uh, one thing people do have questions about is, no, you do not have to pay me anything in order to be shown in my gallery. And conversely, I'm not paying you. However, um, in the art gallery, when I we have the title and the description and the artist, there will be links to be able to, uh, wherever it's sold, you'll be able to go directly to that artist and um, give your appreciation directly to the artist. Because I definitely appreciate people that um, do charitable things. And like, we just want to make it sustainable for everybody. So you have two projects now, Amy. Do you have another project you want to share with us? <laughs> I'm like going, don't you have another project? You tell you, you tease me, but um, I had a second job and last week they were like, congratulations. Uh, this is no longer going to be a second job for you. You're going to be the founder of that company. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't need, I don't need three companies, but this one is really cool. I'm going to pin something about it too, because uh, sure. Why not? Um, because yeah, I sat in your space and I, I heard you talking about this. So I was like, oh, okay, one, two, three. Yeah. So apparently I'm the founder of three companies, but this one I'm a co-founder. So um, it's called Mutation Station. And basically it's a gamified experience for generative images. And you take the NFT that you already own and you choose the artistic style that you like. And you mutate your art, your art that you own into a new NFT. And this is good because eventually we're going to have um, multiple artists and all the profits from the mutation will go to the, to the, the original artist, like the, the model. It's a machine learning thing. So it's going to be like really cool because um, I don't know about you, but all of this art that I own, I'm getting like emotionally attached to. So it's really nice to be able to just um, like mutate it and, and also have something that I feel I have ownership of. Yeah, you take an NFT to another level. I'm just, you know, I got a few NFT and all I can think of was um, 
to uh, you know make them into T-shirts and handbags, and you and you're taking another step further on the NFT art, meaning taking the original NFT, creating another layer on top of it, and then am, am I correct on that aspect as far as taking a NFT, like owning the original NFT, and then making more NFTs out of that original NFTs, and then correct, yes. So I can literally just create a whole new look for myself, like clothing wise, because you know, because I'm thinking about merchandising, merchandising. But with yours is is an extra added bonus. Yes, I'm hoping that other people enjoy using this tool as much as I do, because I get like the behind the scenes tool, and I've been just creating so much art. Because I'm not an artist myself. I'm one of like the people that wishes that I could do art and had the time to do that. Um, but it, like, this has really been a really good artistic outlet for me. Yeah, that's how I feel about NFT, uh, music NFT. When I listen to it, I mix it all together and I play different people's music. Um, you know, NFT music is like so incredible. And then I look at the art aspect of it. So I know what you're saying as far as getting a creative Mind, especially if you're able to do analytics and then creative at the same time, it's incredible. So, um, have you? Um, w when will you think you'll be having people beta test it? So, hopefully, in the first half of June. Um, I I had some family issues last week, so I am like not 100% in the loop. Um, but I'm pretty sure we'll be technically done by the end of may so i will definitely let you know tonya so that we can get some testers in there yeah i i have a few that i think would would love this um because because i see a lot of people that like everyone's getting into nft art i mean have you seen that like everybody's i mean link trees getting into nft art i yeah so one of the things that i've heard is Okay, well, the space is a little crowded right now. So can we think about the utility with the NFT? And to me, like, that is really exciting. Like, um, what, how can we, well, my views on this are that I want it so that NFT artists can derive passive income from their NFTs, not just on point of sale. And I think, I don't know if the bear market is um, deterring any NFT artists, but I feel like there's room for everybody. And I, I like, I really just want to create systems where like, you don't have to be the like number one top artist. Y you can make a living and, and just, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I want to make it easier for the, this, not super well-known NFT artists to make a living off of it. Yeah, I think that's the most important part. I think a lot of um, NFT artists are trying to create legacy for themselves and their family. And what I'm loving about all this is with your that with that specific project, you can because I'm watching parents and children doing a project together, and to see that, I think that's the most important thing that people should realize bringing family unit together you know because you know i remember when social media started right i mean emily would know like there, there's such a division between uh how family consume digital media like you know and you know your, your parents is on facebook kids are on snapchat like there's not really that that communication uh, aspect of it you know like they're all on their phone doing this your project can be able to bring NFT project together, like the parents NFT with their kids and create something fun. And it's exciting June because, you know, summer's here. And I'm thinking like, you know, I, I, when I, when, when my kid was a child, we, I used to send him to art camp, right? Art camp, art camp, art camp. And how cool would it be if we were able to create a program where we taught the, the parents and kids about NFT, but then have your pro, your program come in too and talk about what else they can do with that original NFT. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's, it's I mean, you can use your uh, your, your from an, an, any different ways if you want. Absolutely. After our launch, <laughs> come talk to me. I I'll probably be ready to um, talk about this type of stuff. Um, 
I'm 100% like, <laughs> I, 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 I found myself in a weird way getting, coming at the web three, but now I think I am like 100% going to commit myself to learning more about like smart contracts and uh, actually being able to implement my views and really just try to make it better for everybody. Well, I know I, I uh, remember we talked about projects, but we we love and we just get into these projects. So one of the projects that I have been thinking and envisioned and talking about, and I just love what once yours is launched, I like to add that part too. You know, like having education for kids. You know, because my church, my transhumanist church, has a school built into it. And I was just talking to um, the founder, and I was like going, thinking, you know, it would be really fun to have like an in per, you know, like. You know, maybe like 10, 12 kids learn about NFT and different projects, but also live stream it out and give it to um, the, the kids and the parents to watch and learn. Because if we're able to do something like that, education is such a key in on onboarding them and then getting them to understand what the NFT is, how it's created, what the blockchain is, Web3. But then adding an extra layer to that, meaning with your with your platform, with the, I don't know, I just, my brain just went wild listening to what you were saying. I was like, oh my God, we can do it this way. I'm a marketer, you know that. No, but I agree. Cause like this summer, my kids, they have soccer camp that only takes like two hours a day. And then I've got kids who were home all summer. And while we're working, you know, we, we don't want to stick them in front of like video games all day, every day. And so hearing you sit here and talk about all of this, I'm like, oh, well, my my daughter does art and my son knows how to do a lot of coding and web design and creating like all kinds of graphics and digital art. And I'm like, I'm going to stick them on an NFT project this summer and have them create something together. And like, I think such a fun idea for a camp or a program. So definitely, you know, between Amy and Tanya, your powers combined, I feel like you could probably make something really amazing happen there. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, I would love to do this. I'm telling you, Amy, it's, it's, it's just like it's a needed thing and, and your platform. It's, besides, you know, I know what you're saying this for the artists, but really think about it as an education tool. Yes, I am. Every once in a while I'm in a Web3 space and I'm like, I should make a book that's just like not your parents' lemonade stand because I think like NFT projects and making small web apps um, and, you know, mobile games and stuff like that. Like, sure, you're a kid, you're you know, like 10, 12, and you're making this stuff and like you might not get rich and famous off of it, but these are skills that are 100%. Like you, you can get a, a, like a real job, a profitable job off of these skills. And so it, like it's highly transferable to like other types of work. So um, yeah, I will we'll definitely keep in, in touch, Tanya. So with these three projects you, you have going on, what do you like to do for fun? Like, do you like, <laughs> what do you like to do for fun? <laughs> I mean, I have, I have two cats. Um, we usually hang out together and uh, I usually read fan fiction. That's what I do when I'm not, when I can't, when I can't program anymore, when I need to have a mental break, it's, it's usually a uh, fanfic time, but with uh, three different jobs now, I'm pretty much doing, oh, I'm, I'm here staring at my hydroponics garden and not talking about that either. Um, yeah, that's I, what I was waiting for you to <laughs> talk about that. That's why I'm, I'm setting this up for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have uh, 20 different types of mint in my house. I have tomato plants, a uh, lavender plant, and then a bunch of kale and lettuce. I have uh, three different types of hydroponics in my house. And um, it's been really nice. I, I say that I am lunch sustainable. So I'm able to feed myself 100% for lunch. And that has really helped with all of the inflation to keep my costs low for eating. No, I love that when you told me about your hydroponic project, I was like, oh my gosh. And have you seen lately, or maybe because you and I were talking about it, I've just been seeing a lot of uh, 
hydroponic walls, people growing plants on their walls. Is that how yours look like? Oh, you know, I should send you pictures of it because they are literally all over my house. Um, I have one wall mounted unit, which is right by my standing desk. So during meetings, you can hear the waterfall. And then I have, it's called an NFT system, a nutrient film technique. So that one is right by my kitchen on um, a shelving unit. And then I have a uh, small cracky system. So basically just mint in mason jars. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's taken over my house, but they're very welcome guests. That's wonderful. Oh my gosh. And also with all that, um, cause they say you have plants in your house, it filters the air and everything. It's, you know, it's really nice to be able to walk past things and go, oh, that's flowering. Or like, oh, well, you know, I need to eat that because it's it's getting big. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it's definitely something to do. And, and your cats don't like attack them? My cats don't care about this stuff at all. Like they, they don't even like when I... Um, made catnip for them. They they do like cat grass, which I probably should uh plant for them again. You make catnip? Really? Yeah, yeah wow. like they wouldn't even they don't even like it. <laughs> I'm like, could could you please eat the catnip? And they're like, we're not interested. I'm like, fine. Fine, you'll get more cat grass. It's fine. Hey, your cats sound like dogs because usually my friends' cats are like, you give them catnip? Oh my gosh. They're like climbing everywhere yeah i i still have like the one bag from three years ago and it just everyone saw i'm just like do you want this and they're like no i'm good i'm like well we're gonna use it because i bought it so there's that i love that oh my gosh it's so cool so um uh, let's talk a little bit one more i mean it's like 10 40 we have about um 20 minutes and i wanted to like ask you some other questions so with glot squad i mean um so i, I didn't get a chance to talk about uh, your project there will you be having an app or how how you just building a platform right now but when it's done would there be an app um so my plan for glot squad is there will be a central website and then what i think i'm going to do is create mobile games that are separate so like each game will have a separate mobile game and that way because um like mobile apps tend to do better if they do like one thing specifically very well but hopefully um there will be advertisements for glass squad and people will be able to go back and um and use that yeah it's also too early to announce this but um for the back end, I'm going to try to do something Web3 with it so that um, people that are language learners and people that create content for language learners can uh, get more passive income and have more ownership of the material that they're doing. And I'm hoping that actually helps revolutionize the language learning industry by allowing language learners to actually uh, keep their profiles from app to app, and then also allow indie language learning platforms to have more material that they have access to. Amy, you're like an incredible woman. Like, like when, you, when you were a little girl, is this what you wanted to do? Oh my gosh, this is like, that's a lot. A lot, a lot of analytics, a lot of, you know, like as far as coding and creating all that, but yet yeah, there's a lot of, um, creativity behind that also. Is this what you wanted to do? I mean, this is incredible. I have been very focused on Japanese for the majority of my life, pretty much since like middle school. Um, I've had a lot of, um, cause yeah, you know, I lived, I lived near Tampa growing up and at that time it wasn't very available. Um, and then like, I just got denied chance after chance to learn Japanese. And it just became one of those things where like, well, if you're going to deny it to me, I want it even more. 
but I've had a lot of years to think about like what do I want language learning in my language learning experience to feel like and to look like and I just find myself in the position now where like I have the ability to actually implement what I want to do so I'm I'm just going to go for it. I love that. I think that's the key. I think um, most people, I myself included over the years, I, I have my main promise and I can never get out of my own way. You know, I'm like always like, I know what I want to get done. I know I want to do this, but then I get so locked in one little thing or focus on one thing and I can never get out of my own way. Um, how have you been able to, to overcome that? Like, like, let's talk a little bit about that. So it's a lot time management. So like for the last month, I have not really been working on Thought Squad because I have been trying to get uh, Band Books Art off the ground. But once uh, Band Books Art, um, we get through the first month, I am going to make sure that that stays at like less than five hours a week type of a work. And then I can start working on Glot Squad again. I have for Mutation Station, I am very committed to getting the first iteration out just to like see see how if we if we have hit the product market fit. And then we will negotiate my time because you know I have a lot of projects, I have a lot of things going on. Um, we need to make sure that we're respecting my time. But like I'm really optimistic and hopeful about Mutation Station. And my hope is it does well enough that I could have Mutation Station be my day job. And then I can do Glot Squad in my time. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take steps so that maybe I can have Glot Squad be my my full-time job and maybe Mutation Station is my uh, second job. So I, my goal is to just have these three things going on but like not a day job. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really, I'm really funny because I'm just like, I don't want to have to work for a living. I just want to do all of my projects. No, that's what you do. Do what you love and it's not really a job. And plus, as long as you're making money and self-sufficient and self-sustainable, that's the key, right? <laughs> And I think it comes down to mindset because a couple of times you keep saying a real job, a real job. You have real jobs, like 100% what you're doing is amazingly like life-changing for people, really. And opening up conversations about super important topics and controversial topics and creating communities and all of that. And so if you can monetize that, you you know, you're way ahead of everybody who's trying to figure out how to do what they love. See saying real job and uh i hate to say this but like real art is a bad habit um what we mean by real art we really mean like physical art and you know digital art and nfts are definitely real art and like any job is a real job but what i really mean is like pay me a salary so that i can maintain my house and standard of living job i know what you're saying yeah, and I, I think you're on track to getting there with all your projects. I mean, all of these sound like um, things that, you know, even coming just from the like media and marketing side of things, like you've got stories to tell with these. And that's always a big key with any of the promotions and getting the word out there with it. And I, I think you're well on track to making this your, you know, quote unquote, real job. Thank you. Yes. Um... Well, yeah, I really have high hopes for uh, Band Books Art for it to be like a nonprofit type thing where, you know, we're making enough money that I can actually hire like a curator and um, like a 3D artist to make the digital art galleries. But in the meantime, we have me. So, um, which there's not a problem with that because I'm amazing. Yes, you are. I love this.
Yeah, I think the banned books are going to do fantastic, especially now with it's, it's 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 in the news quite a bit about the books being like certain books. I don't even know why they're banned. I I read it. I had to read it in school. I didn't get it. But what, will you be featuring a lot of different books um, that were banned in school, like in, especially in America? Yes, we're going to rotate monthly and I'm going to allow the artists to vote on what are the next ones. And after this first time, I'm going to announce like two or three months in advance. That way people can um, look at their NFT collections and figure out like what they want to use <laughs> for the art uh, instead of just like every month being like, surprise, new art. But um, one of the topics we're probably going to do is just math, math books, <laughs> because Florida, they banned like, 50 or like 70 books and they called they said it was like crt and it was really ridiculous and funny so i think we might actually just be doing math next month i love that i think the everything happening in florida is ridiculous but um that particular conversation i think needs more conversation behind it so i think that's fantastic actually very um, and media worthy topic. So don't forget your public relations when you're doing the galleries, because that's going to be really important. And yeah, that was an incredible picture, by the way. She pitches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm happy. Like, if you guys have a press release or anything, like, happy to send it out to some people. And we work a lot with the feminist magazine Bust, which I don't know if you're familiar with Bust magazine, but they do a lot um, as far as topics and like banned books and women's rights and. Um, it's a very feminist publication, and I think they would definitely be interested in covering the gallery. So if you, you know, again, hit me up because I, I work with them often. I'm happy to send them a note about what you're doing. That would be amazing. You're amazing. I think, I think you're amazing. So, no, definitely um, DM me or get my, you know, we can talk after this, but certainly happy to help on that end. It takes a community, right, to get something going. And I think this is definitely a community project. Absolutely. This is like, band and math. I'm and, talk on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got, and the reading community. And I was also going to say, Amy, and I know everybody, like, shies away from this a little bit, especially, like, when it comes to um, people who are used to maybe being behind the camera a little bit more, not so much like on the video side of things, but TikTok. And there is a huge community of uh, readers and there's uh, book TikToks, like accounts fully dedicated to these very avid like, readers and people who would be, I think, really into um being a part and buying tickets and seeing the gallery art and all. So don't negate a good TikTok video or, you know, Instagram reels and things like that also while you're promoting this. I will definitely be trying all of this because Band Books Art is my attempt at figuring out marketing because um, I've always been on like the developer side of things and I've never really gotten a project to the point where I actually have to think about marketing. So um like this is like new ground for me but i'm really excited about you know trying all these different techniques and like trying to figure out tiktok and i already have um i'm using hive which is a blockchain blogging thing so that made sense to me because it's banned books and censorship and if it's on the blockchain you can't really censor it so that made sense for it to be its home to be there Jennifer was talking about Hive, was she? That's that's where she blogs. You know, yeah, Jennifer. Yeah. Her. Same thing. Yep. She blogs on there as well. And I think that's honestly, I think everybody should be blogging on the blockchain these days because we don't know what's gonna happen with other platforms. Yeah, you know, a lot of the platforms are trying to go web three. I'm gonna take a look at um, you know, Meta. I, I so weird. I'm so used to calling them Facebook. Um, that you know, there's so many different types of implement implementing um parts of their platform that I think that's um, 
are starting to catch up. And, you know, when you see, when you hear the word Web3, Web3, I mean, I've been hearing it for a while now, but I start, I'm starting to hear people talk about it more, like, in real life instead of just Twitter. Yeah, I've been noticing, like, with all of my clients, as we're starting to discuss, like, next quarter and future planning, it's become the hot topic with everyone. And where's Web3 going? And what do we need to think about for future planning with it? So there's so much more conversation around it, which is definitely exciting. Yeah, that's the thing with Web3 and new technology is that, like, as a developer, I've been exposed to the talk for, you know, a couple of years now on Tech Twitter, but it's really the beginning. Like it's it's not been wildly uh, widely adopted, so like we're still in a good place to start adopting um, and start to use those tools to our advantage. I mean, I still remember. I, th I think I took a picture of it, but I still remember in two thousand eight when I saw the first store that says "Like us on Facebook," you know. And back then, when you talk about social media, people were like. What do you mean social media? Why would I want to share what I'm eating today? You know, remember that, Emily? And people that we were the oh, weird. Yep. <laughs> and even, I mean, look, even, even now, weirdly, there's pushback sometimes from some of like the more old school like, companies and stuff of why do they have to be on social? And that's not where their audience is. And my favorite thing is proving them wrong on that um and showing them like your audience is 100 percent on social media not every platform and you have to find where they are but they're most definitely being social they're definitely jumping into web3 there's absolutely like just there's a platform for everybody when it comes to all this and and it's every industry and every company and slowly but surely just like social people are starting to to realize it and get into it and it's a good adventure i want to say hi to kevin Hey Kevin, it's Tanya. How are you? I gave you, I gave Kevin the mic. Um, he hosts a really uh, incredible tech space. Um, so let's see if he wants to pop up and ask a question. We have about six minutes, so I want to be mindful of our time. And Terry, if you want to grab the mic, um, we can start doing the closing thoughts. And so, so Amy, let's let's go ahead and um, round like wind down a little bit and do some closing thoughts on this. So we got three projects. I know all those three projects are going to be incredible. And I feel like they can be uh, entwined. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? Must be really early for you. Yep, it's almost 8 a.m. You know, I was like, oh, wow, thank you for being here. So um, I, we're just having a, a closing thought. And I'm just, uh, I guess I'm, I'm really excited about the band books art, but um, but if you really think about it, I mean, all your three projects can kind of entwine together. Like, could be, because it, it actually go hand in hand. You can use them all together. Yes, I'm really hoping that the community I build around Band Books Art is also interested in creating content for uh, Glot Squad, and that the language learners that are using Glot Squad are also interested in you know, creating content and like, I feel like these systems and all of my projects, like they're different, but they there's a theme to it. I'm excited to uh, watch you grow because I think, um, and as, as you go further, you know, as, as time goes on, and I think when you launch your project and everything, and the more people talk about Web3 and the fact that, and, and you know, I sit up all night, really. I just research NFT, Web3, all the different things, articles that I feel like I need to share and distribute out because the more information, and, and I always double and triple check my, uh, whatever I, I'm sharing out, I'm always checking to make sure it's, it's um, you know, it's legit. But um, I... I I'm excited about your project because a everything you're talking about kind of like I I want to I want to use it you know, and try it out too, but also it's actually a needed like needed projects because um, you know being on Twitter Spaces a lot I, I started you know learning a lot about different people's languages and how pe and and it makes me want I'm like oh no I should so I'm always turning on the transcription I'm, I'm thinking about the, about languages right. But then on the flip side, I'm, I'm looking at all the NMT art and then I look at your other project and I sat in your space. So um, and then you, and then when you told me about your band books art project, um, was it a couple of days ago over the weekend? You had me so excited. I was like, wow, this is like so cool. 
So where do you, um, how do you feel about all this? Do you want to pinch yourself every day or because this is just everything you're saying and doing is all coming to fruition. I feel like, um, well, first of all, I'm excited about my life and what I'm doing with my free time and all of these projects. And I just have faith in myself and like any, like any result is a good result. And I'm just going to try my hardest to like, to the best of my ability to make, uh, to manifest this for myself. And I'm just really excited to be working for all of these things. And I'm just, you know, really hopeful for my future. I, I think, and I hope, I think you got it. And then, you know, Kevin is with Apple. So I'm kind of, and, um, you know, Apple is going, is it's doing some great stuff too. I'm actually, when I'm done here, I'm going to be calling Apple myself about my computer because I like, did a whole bunch of changes and there's a bunch of security impl implemented. So I just, uh, when I saw Kevin, I was like, oh, Kevin, Apple. But um, Kevin, did you want to share anything? We're going to be closing out the space. I appreciate you for popping in. Yeah, definitely check out the tips app on iOS, on iPhone, iPhone and iPad. And it's also available on watch. Because uh, that's what I work on at Apple. But uh, no, I just want I hope everybody has a really good day. And um, yeah, I hope Amy has a lot of success in her future. I think Amy, I think Amy got this. So Amy, before we let you go, um, tell the listeners how to get a hold of you. I know you have three different um, projects you're working on, but again, this is being streamed on Facebook uh, and on YouTube and also on our website, but we're going to be, uh, it's already written up as a blog. So um, can you tell us how to get a hold of you? Yes. Um, honestly, the best way to get a hold of me is through Twitter. Um, I'm awful at every other form of communication. So um, this account is Detweiler underscore Amy. That is D-E-T-W-I-L-E-R underscore Amy. And then Band Books Art is uh, B-A-N-N-E-D-B-O-O-K-S A-R-T. And in my profile there, you can see there's a Discord invite. And you can join the Discord. And um, right now it's really quiet, but we're going to have discussions about the books in there. And then Glot Squad is G L O T S Q U A D. So, yes, just find me on Twitter and we can connect. Thank you so much. Emily, any final thoughts? Not just a big thank you to Amy, and I look forward to talking to you further about your projects and seeing where everything goes. And just like Tanya said, I can't wait to use them. So I'm psyched. It was nice to meet you today. And it was great to meet you, too. And it's always great to talk to you, Tanya. Oh, my Oh my God. We, we, I'll be talking to you in a few minutes in a DM. But Terry, any final thoughts? I think Terry has a spike. I, her mic is open. But um, on that note, um, next week, our, um, I appreciate everyone for being here. Next week, our special guest will be um, we at 10 a.m. will be Fern Pesson. She's an author, writer, and mentor. So we'll be featuring her next week. And this uh, episode is already um, streamed on YouTube. Well, it already has a, uh, it's actually, if you go to our website, AWC South Florida, spelled out, dot org. So it's a w c s o u t h f l o r i d a dot org, and um, you can click the button. You can listen to the replay. And again, everyone, we appreciate you for being here. We'll be back next Monday at ten a.m. Eastern Standard Time for another episode of Empower Yourself Monday. It'll be our episode twenty-one. And again, thank you, everybody. Have an incredible day. You too, Tanya. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.